<laughs> Welcome back to Qtronics, where I have all the gear and no idea. Now, coming off the back of some failed fixes, I'm going to be modding a Nintendo Switch Lite. Firstly, I'm not doing this for piracy, so you might be asking, why mod the Nintendo Switch Lite? Well, for me, there are two really good reasons. Firstly, to get a copy of your NAND memory. So, on the Nintendo Switch, the NAND memory and the APU are linked together. So, if one of them fails, the Switch is dead. Now, the EMMC memory will fail eventually. So, by having a NAND backup, you could replace that chip and then all of a sudden, your Nintendo Switch will work again. Coming up in a future video, you can swap out the 32GB version or the 64GB version of the EMMC for a 256GB version, giving you more internal memory. And second and most importantly, the NVIDIA Tegra chip inside of the Switch is actually underclocked, so Nintendo could get better battery performance. Now, when you dock it, you do actually increase those clock speeds, but they don't go all the way to what the X1 Tegra chip should actually be able to do. So my primary reason for modifying switches is to run them at the clock speeds NVIDIA intended them to run at. Also, as a side note, by modifying your switch, you can actually get your save data off there. Now, for me, this has proved crucial when I was trying to get my Final Fantasy X data off the switch to be able to use on my Steam Deck. So that's a little side note for you. Right then, let's get into it. I'll be back shortly with the Nintendo Switch down to its motherboard. Right then, guys, we're back. And the first thing we need to do after we've got the motherboard out is to clean off the thermal paste on top of the shield above the CPU and RAM. So let's do that. Obviously, I'm going to be using a isopropyl alcohol, like everyone ever does. Let's get let's get that cleaned off first. There we go, nice and clean. So the next step is to remove the heat shield, and if you look. Is these little clips going around the side? Yeah, look, here's one. And now I'll use a needle to get into these because it just makes things a hell of a lot easier. I'll switch over to the scope and you'll see how much easier it makes it with the needle. Should be able to see those little holes. Now they're tiny. This is the how big a needle looks at this magnification. So we're going to get our needle in there. Just lift forward. See, there's just a little catch. We just want to bend that catch forward. Then we've got to the next one. Same again. You can't do this without the microscope. I'm just using the microscope to show you exactly what it is I'm doing. Right, there we go. I don't think I've ever had one be that difficult to come off before. So the solder, there's thermal paste underneath here, so we'll just get that cleaned off. There's the heat shield sorted. And now let's get all the stuff cleaned off. Get all the solder paste cleaned off around the CPU. Right then, when it comes to the mod chip, we have the following pieces. We have this cable here, which solders on to the AC D parts, as well as being ground and the 3.3 volt line. And we have this part here, which solders onto the CPU. Right, I'll just show you on the camera first where these roughly go. And then we'll pick it back up from there. Right then, so we're back with the board. So where these two things would go is down here. So this would sit here. Obviously, we're under the scope. This will be better. But it sits approximately here. On top of these two sideways pins there. Something along those lines. And then the, and then the, the ending wire drops around here somewhere. And this cable, this is the first time I've used a cable like this. Normally they bend over each other. We'll sit. Sit 
it somewhere around there. Obviously, once we get under the scope, you'll see this much better. But this is the first time I've used one of these cables. Normally, they have to bend over. Uh, and I think this is actually better because it sits now on top of the ram, whereas before, it would sit on top of here. So anyway, let's get into the soldering. Pop the ribbon down for a second. Pop the ribbon down for a second so you can see we have the C point, the A point, D, ground, B. And then if we come over here to the wall, we have the 3 volt and then this connection point. So, <clears throat> just to explain where those sit. C sits here. These two pads here, they're linked together. A is here and D is here. So once you get those ones lined up, B will naturally fall into place. So first things first, we're going to, I will show you where B is. B is over, B is over here. These two pads here are B. Now let's tin those pads and we'll go from there. Right then, I'm using 330 degrees on my soldering iron. Um, I'm using a fine tip because obviously, as you can tell, these are very small parts. So firstly, let's get some flux on them. Um, I get the diet. <coughs> I get the wall to me through so we can just confirm if those points are actually hitting what they're supposed to be hitting. Should be looking around 500 to 0 0.5 to 0 0.8, I believe. This obviously is a voltage line. It reads at 0 0.8 while the switch is off, which is which is normal for these kind of things. Check the other points. Over down here. So these should all read in diode mode. Around about that 0.5 to 0.8. So black on ground. So C is reading 0 0.749. A is reading 0 0.743. D is reading 0 0.772. And B should read a little bit higher. B is reading 2.6, and then obviously, just to confirm, we have ground. Not in continuity mode for that. That's ground. Let's just make sure B is not. If these two points are connected here. That looks good then. So I'm going to swap the tip out of my iron purely because we're going to need to solder some ground points. 
and they require just that bit more heat. So the fine tip, I find that the fine tip soldering iron doesn't heat them quite as good as it used to be. We want it to sit like that. And just make sure these other ones up here match up to their corresponding holes. And the reason we do this second is because, as you can see, the other cable sits underneath this one. And, uh, I've done this one before where I did it first, and it makes installing the second cable a little bit harder. The idea is we want to try and get these pieces of metal either side of this. And I find that if you give them a little bit of a push down, lock it into place. And it's a stay a little bit more. So first thing first, let's solder those ground holes. Because I found that if you don't solder the ground first, then you come into a situation where actually uh, you can knock some of the caps off. We don't want to do that. Right, we're coming in at 3.30 again. Let's get some flux on here. The wrong mode here, sorry. We go into resistance mode, not diode. Uh, one side is zero. The other side should be anywhere between 10 and 15, I've found. So the left side of this should be pretty much zero. The right side should be anywhere between 10 and 15. The right side of this one should be zero, and the left side be around 10 to 15. Once we've sold it, those are the figures we want to see. Right, my iron's cold enough to change the tip now. Good to me now. Right then, let's test those and let's test those again and see where we're at. Fourteen on the right side. Thirteen point seven on the left side. Zero and zero again that looks good to me we'll just double check it looks like it's all soldered i'm happy with that right then let's give it a clean up and move on these pin if you do happen to pull these caps ever i believe they're one pf i'll get it added on onto the description for you to let you know what they are but they're quite they're not the most common chip the most common uh, capacitor, but you can get them quite easily. Right then, I'm just going to reassemble this enough to be able to test to make sure our chip actually works. So first things first, the uh, I'm going to call it a jizzle of thermal paste. English motherfucker, do you speak it? Everyone seems to have their little joke and obviously playing on the perfect amount of thermal paste. Well, I've decided to use the word jizzle because why not? Boy, don't ever say that again, especially not at your age in a world that's not ready for such such dangerous nonsense. I 
we go, a nice jizzle of thermal paste. Now, when it comes to reapplying the heat shield, if you look where we are, if you look where we are in here, where the wire comes out, we just need to bend the heat shield. We need to bend the heat shield enough so we don't cut that wire. And luckily, where that's coming out is just right on the clip. So we can just bend the clip. Previously, we used to have to cut these. Um, I've seen I've seen videos of them cut. I've, I've not done many myself. Where I've, had, I've done one where I've had to cut it. But there we go. And if you can see that, there you go. Look how it's uh, just bent, just in place. Right, then we can drop the heat shield back in place. Let's get back into the case and give it a quick test. Right, there we go. Oh, that's always stressful. I do all the micro soldering, but I can't put the cables back in the right place. Right, then it's just a process now of attach reattaching cables. There we go, no SD card found. Right, I'll get the switch back together and we'll come back at the end. Right then, welcome back guys. The switch is all together now, as you can see. So let's turn it on, just prove that actually it has been modded. Right, I've already inserted my card with all the details on there. So when we boot it up, we're gonna have to hold the top buttons to make it boot into that custom menu. So let's go, boots on. There we go. And there's a techie loaded just to prove where uh, the switch has been modded. So there we go. Right, guys, if you enjoyed that, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see any other mods. I, uh, I've I've got some Dreamcast stuff coming up. And also, I've got a Nintendo Switch OLED coming up shortly because I had a Switch Lite and a Switch OLED. The OLED mod installed for me personally is so much harder. So hopefully, you'll be able to check that out and see how that goes. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it goes well. Anyway, guys. Thanks for joining us. Catch you soon.